Hello and welcome to Generation 16, the series that showcases the history of Sega's Mega Drive. I'm Greg Stewart. I've been covering games for 20 years now. I co-founded Gaming Age and was the reviews editor for Electronic Gaming Monthly and co-founder of the Player One Podcast, one of the longest running gaming podcasts around. Join me while I recap the history of Sega's 16-bit powerhouse game by game. On Generation 16, I focus on the interesting stories behind each title, big hardware launches by Sega and its competitors, and key news stories that shaped the console wars in the early 90s. Sega went from underdog to market leader and back again, and on Generation 16, we explore how. Looking for the mic button. There we go. My stream deck is... uh... Something happened with the latest update of the Stream Deck, so it doesn't work with this version of OBS anymore, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, hey, Scoop Jessica. Hey, Keenad. Um, it's Adventure Night. Uh, we're here, to, of course, to raise money for Extra Life. Go to Stuart.ca up there, and you can make a tax-deductible donation to Extra Life uh, in support of the IWK Health Center. It's $1,600. Um, every time you see that intro, you want to play Snatcher. Well, you know, it's, it's not wrong to want to play Snatcher, ever. Hey, Scoop Joey. Um... Of course, we're trying to raise $10,000 again this year, so please, please, please uh, donate if you can. And uh, I would give you the um, game request link, but Stream Deck's not working. So, hey, hey, hey. Good old Sierra Orange people. Yeah, that's right. Um, we're playing Leisure Suit Larry 2. Leisure Suit Larry goes looking for love in several wrong places. And remember, if you want to, you can also support the channel by cheering, by subscribing. Uh, by buying merchandise. Uh, subscription numbers have gone down. I think that's because if, uh, a few people need to to re-up for the month. So please, if you haven't done so already, please do so. Let's play Lucy Street Larry 2. Ooh, Mega SG. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I can't bring myself to spend that money right now. All right. Let's do it. You know if the audio is loud enough or too loud. definitely uh, upgraded our audio quality <laughs> yeah 1988 is where the big switch happened I find really weird is that they did not match that theme song to this intro. I love that he's still wearing the Legion suit. Eve, baby, you greet your woman with love in your voice. You're finally home. I've been worried sick about you. Who are you? asked the voluptuous woman in the magnificent red sports car. And why are you mowing my lawn? Why, Eve, don't you remember me? It's Larry, Larry Laffer. We met in the hot tub in Lost Wages, in your luxury penthouse apartment, in the land of the lounge lizards, just before my big finale, wink wink, at the end of the game, remember? Vaguely, she says. So why are you here? Why, I, er, uh, that is, you stammer. Why, well, I just kind of assume when two people are as deeply in love as we are, the natural thing to do is to move in together, and so here I am. Move in, you creep. You've got exactly five minutes to get everything out of my house and out of my life. Brutus, she commands her dog. On guard. Hmm, you think to yourself. That dog looks rather familiar. I'll be back here in five minutes, Eve shouts, and you won't. Alyssae.
Gee, Larry, looks like things are just the way they used to be. You thought your life was complete. You'd found true love with a beautiful woman, with a beautiful car and a beautiful home, all in beautiful Los Angeles. But instead, you're out on the streets again. Hey, Ben. What will you do? Meanwhile, on the beautiful tropical island paradise of Nun Tonight Island, somewhere located in the South Pacific, a formerly strange weather phenomenon occurs once again, located somewhere in the South Pacific, that red. That, uh, red. Hey, Gaijin. The island's native tribe has grown accustomed to these recent occurrences of dense fog, even though it appears and dissipates quite rapidly. Yeah, this one's... What the natives don't know, however, is that the fog is just a smoke screen to cover the activities of an evil force so sinister, so sly, so slick, that the mere mention of his name brings fear to the heart of the staunchest man. No nookie. <laughs> no nookie. There you go. Hey, math man. Uh, I think there's parts of it that are rated pretty much AO, but I don't remember if this is the one or there's another one where it gets a little more graphic than you expect. I forget which one that is. That's why my channel is rated mature. Because we're really mature otherwise. Inside is volcanic mountain fortress the dirty doctor is designing the most disgusting of whatever because i'm reading the uh the follow thanks for the follow ravenclaw where is that woman why is she so slow shouts dr nonoki she should be here by now that means you're mature <laughs> yes it does i like the gray streak in his hair Sir, crackles the radio. Shipment incoming. Aha, here she is. That's more like it, he says. Calling LA, calling LA, he says into the microphone. Yes, sir, responds a female voice on the other end. Is everything in place for the transfer, he asks. Everything, she snaps back. He smiles a broad smile. Excellent, L.A. Keep me informed, he concludes. And remember, no mistakes. They're fans. Thank you, Giraffe. Evidently, the bad doctor is planning something to do with Los Angeles and some sort of transfer. What could it be? Fan me, he shouts, and now, fire me, boy. Now feed me grapes, he orders with a sinister smile, and keep them coming. This music is such a step up from everything we've heard so far. Gosh, Larry, let's hope you never end up on the bad side of this character. Oh yeah, we haven't actually started the game yet. That was just the intro. All right. You were so sure this would be the location of your future happy life with Eve, but some things are not to be. Oh, this is, by the way, this is the best thing ever. Harry, Harry, Larry has a bald spot. Isn't that great? Hey, what's this? Eve left the dollar bill stuffed in this old pair of pants. Okay. You briefly consider the morality of this move, but after all she hasn't done for you, you decide it's probably the least she can do. All right, let's go north. Graphics in this too, like amazing. It's 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 kind of cool because it was such a ah thanks for the donation Keenad let me know what game you want me to play it's kind of cool too because uh, it was such a l long time between Larry one and Larry two that the, the differences in the visuals are really striking bald spots are great my whole head's a bald spot some kind of 
theme park back there. Isn't that Disneyland? Nah, not in an Al Lowe game. This place looks like it belongs in Space Quest IV, the Coarse Gold Encounter. Yeah, these are a plane flying across in the background. Oh, there's the bar. You are now in a slightly seedy section of the city. Okay, we're still looking for somebody here. What's north? Ye old ethno-musicology shop. You're outside of the famous LA landmark, Ye old ethno-musicology shop. You're familiar with them from their many advertisements on late night cable television. Does this town have specialized stores or what? That is a high curb. You're in front of the world-renowned Rodeo Drive Italian clothing purveyor Molto Lira. You've never been able to afford anything in there. Should probably start saving. We're looking for a jogger. All right, this is a better, I'm clearly using walkthroughs and this is a better one. Yeah, like I said, the graphics are just such a huge step up in this. Oh yeah, wow, the, the, the score is like um, way higher than usual. The possible score is way higher than usual. All right, let's keep going north. Crod TV Studios. Crod originates many of your favorite television shows, including the big Lucky Life Lottery. The car parked in the background there. These scenes are very intricate. Oh, somebody walking around in the background. The Hollywood signs back there. That's trademarked, isn't it? You wonder what part of Los Angeles you're in now. Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh, now, now it looks like Los Angeles. This looks exactly like the dark alley in Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. <laughs> but where's your friend? You bend over and peer through the knot hole in the fence. On the other side, you see people playing Police Quest. How you wish you were one of them. In game ads, gotta love it. Who needs the quickie mart? Their floors are sticky mart. Only in Southern California would you find a convenience store without a door. Gosh, you think. I wonder if they're open. This looks just like the one in the first game. This Quickie Mart has many items for sale. 
A clerk lounges sleepily behind the counter near a lottery ticket machine. There is a soda dispenser near the front window. <laughs> the Quickie Mart is real dope. Who's going to buy us a lottery ticket? Here's my last dollar, you say, handing it to the cute clerk. How about selling me one of those Lucko Bucko lottery tickets? Okay, partner, says the clerk. Here you go. Just st stick this here ticket in the machine on the end of the counter. Good luck, she concludes. Have a nice day. You insert the paper ticket into the Lucko Bucko machine. Hey, Jasper Teen. I didn't say hello when you came in. The Lucko Bucko Lottery Machine's video display screen flashes. Please enter your six numbers between 100 and 999 now. Uh. Processing. No, the DRM is um, finding the picture of a little of a, a woman in a little black book and putting in her phone number. This is processing for a long time. Out pops your Lucko Bucko lottery ticket. You take it and wonder, will I be a winner? I just, you put in any numbers you want. I have no idea if you have to remember them. <laughs> yeah, it did have great cover art. They really changed the style of the cover art starting with this game, didn't they? Oh man, I'm a sleaze now. I like how these games move. The television studio lobby is lavishly decorated in the latest trend. A receptionist sits in the center of the room. There are doors in every wall. Say, you ask the receptionist, is this lottery ticket any good? I don't know, she replies. I've misplaced my glasses. As best I can remember, this week's Lucky Life Lottery Lucko Bucko numbers are... Oh my god. 324. Hang on, i got to write this down. I remember looking at the box art in Radio Shack when I was a kid and thinking the exact same thing. My parents would never let me own this game. That's why I played it. That's why we pirated it and played it at my friend's place when his parents were asleep. 324... Five, five, three, two, one, six, three, eight, zero, two, one, five, and six, three, two. What six numbers do you have? <laughs> uh, I love it. Well, I have three, two, four, five, five, three. Two, well, that is a six, two, one, six, three, eight, zero, two, one, five, and six, three, two. Why, that's correct, she replies excitedly. You are a lucky guy. The last Lucky Life Lottery show of the season is being taped right now. I'll notify the director that you're here. I'm sure you'll be called immediately. I'll unlock the door to the green room so you can wait there. Oh, by the way, says the receptionist, don't get nervous just because you're on live television being watched by millions of people. She chuckles softly under her breath. Yeah, until you realize that you, you really can't do anything. 
Oh, look at that. That is a great background. You wonder why the reception has called this a green room when there's no green in it at all. There are two television monitors, a bench, some art posters, a lovely modern painting, and three doors. He's waiting. Still waiting. Oh, we're hosers now. I don't think those mean anything. One monitor shows a lovely young lady, the other just static. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you, Poo Poo, cries the man. You're late. Where have you been, you silly little dickens? We've just been worried thick about you. This is cringeworthy. Before you can answer him, he tells you, hurry up, honey, you're on. Control room talk back speaker crackles. Five seconds to air, boys and girls. Five seconds to air. Places, everybody. Let's save this real quick. I forgot about the dating show. This doesn't look at all like you expected a lottery show to look. But just in case, you decide to grab a seat on that empty stool over there. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the, that was the that was the humor they were going for. The voiceover announcer says, From Hollywood, it's the latest and greatest in embarrassment programming. The all-new Dating Connection. And here's your host, Biff Barf. Thank you and welcome. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here for the all-new Dating Connection. We're just about ready to play our game, so let's meet our contestants. Who's going to make their big Dating Connection today? Biff, today's lovely bachelorette, is Barbara Bimbo of Airhead, California. Barbara's hobbies are computer programming, creating unusual milkshakes, and tantalizing elderly men. She lists her turn-ons as industrial-grade blenders and RS-232 interfacing. Turn-offs include international military conflicts and the aroma of Rosencore solder. <laughs> On the left is bachelor number one, a professional surfboard waxer from Gumbo, Missouri. His hobbies include collecting Braunschweiger casings, speculating on the sexual preference of professional dancers, and watching televised opera with the sound off. Meet Davy Blair. I love the little dude with the camera. Bachelor number two is today's token intellectual. He is presently chairman of the physics department at our local university, FU. Originally from Pakistan, Ohio, meet Rakuka Singh Soon. Hey, that's not your name. Uh, excuse me, you shout. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. Okay, Rakuka Larry, responds Biff. Whatever you want to call yourself is okay with me. And on the far right today is bachelor number three, a journalism major who quit college in order to pursue his dream job fact checker on the National Inquiry newspaper. Hey, Netatech. It is perfect for me. Currently unemployed, meet AP Wire. Wow. And now it's time to play the dating connection, says Biff Barf. Barbara, may we have your first question, please? Okay, like, thanks, Biff, you know, says Barbara. Bachelor number one, like, this one's for you. If I was to go, like, out on a, you know, date with you and you was, like, you know, all dressed up or something and, like, the car busted and we had to walk for help and I, like, broke a, you know, heel, like, how would you fix it? <laughs> like, you know, 
It seems obvious her elevator doesn't reach her penthouse. <laughs> Why beautiful? If you were with me, you wouldn't have to worry about any old breakdown. We'd be cruising in my brand new Porsche and you wouldn't have a care in the world. Besides, if something did happen to your heel, I'd just sweep you up in these muscular arms and carry you wherever you wanted to go. When you're a top-notch physical specimen like me, a light little feather like you would be a breeze. You're sure not even this mental midget would fall for a cornball line like that. Jeez, how romantic, she gushes. What more could any girl want? I'm going to see how disgusted Jessica gets through all this. Well, Bachelor, you're number one with me. So much for your theory, Larry. <laughs> and now, how about you, Bachelor number two? She asks. How would you solve this puzzle? Okay, Larry, that's your cue. You're on. Uh... Ah, uh, well, er, you stumble. Call triple A. Who let in that jerk? Barbara squeals. What a putz. Barbara attempts to assume an intelligent expression. Now, how about you, bachelor number, you know, three? Bachelorette Barbie, my deepest personal feelings are that you are far too sexy for me ever to allow you to leave my highly expensive beachfront swinging bachelor apartment. You and I would spend all our time together alone, sharing each other in every way, if you know what I mean. How's that for a way with words? Ooh, how sexy, she gushes. What more could any girl want? This is so weird to play this, you know, what, what is it, 30 years later? <laughs> you may be bachelor number three on this program, but you're number one in my heart. Do you think anyone's still watching this tribe? I don't know, my viewer count's getting higher. <laughs> Barbara, in my opinion, you've just asked one of our best questions ever, says Biff Barf. Now, do you think you could come up with another great question? Once again, Barbara burns off a few million brain cells attempting to rise to the occasion. Oh, like, thanks, Biff, you know, says Barbara. Bachelor number one, like, this one's for you. Like, if you was a, you know, insect and, like, I was a, you know, flower, what kind of, you know, insect would you, like, be... And, like, what kind of flower am I? Lesai. Barbara, responds bachelor number one, I'd be a beautiful butterfly, and you'd be my tender little buttercup. Together we build a wonderful garden of love. Give me some uh, suggestions for insects and flowers in the chat. Yeah, Jessica. <laughs> At least his garden would be well fertilized. Like the, the camera guy even took a knee. That's fantastic. Like, you are quite the charmer, aren't you, number one? She gushes. I'd love to sow a few seeds with you. <laughs> Biff, she says, must I, like, waste our time asking El Dorco this question? Rhinoceros beetle. Biff responds, why, of course, Bachelorette Barbara, you must follow the rules. Okay, boar number two, she says sarcastically. Can you know, even, like, remember the question? Come on, Larry, fire your best shot. I don't know if I'm... Uh, okay, I can't... A weed. There we go. I'd be a dung beetle and you'd be a weed. I couldn't go any further. It wouldn't let me type anymore. Like, what planet beamed this spook down, she squeaks. I've heard better lines in a, you know, nursing home. Well, bachelor number three, she says, I can't, you know, wait to learn, like, what insect are you and, like, what flower am I, you know, I. <laughs> 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 
Barbie doll, you'd be my precious American beauty rose, and I'd be your little bumblebee. I know you'd enjoy rubbing a little of your pollen on my stinger. <laughs> Does this show supply antacids? <laughs> well, number three, we certainly are the oversexed to little devil, aren't we? Barbara gushes. Hold it right there, interjects Biff. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for questions today. Bachelorette Barbie, it's time for you to make your dating connection. Barbie smiles. Well, Biff, it's really difficult to choose. Both men are really terrific. <laughs> that's a good line. Something makes you feel the both doesn't include you. Yes, but I'm sure the audience has already made its decision, says Biff. Yes, says Barbara, and I've made my decision, you know, too. Piff looks surprised. Okay, Bachelor 2 it is. But frankly, Bachelor Barbara, I must admit I'm a little surprised. Did he say Bachelor number 2? Look at Larry. <laughs> Barbara, I think most of us expected a different choice, says Biff Barf. Wait, Biff, shouts Barbara. I want a bachelor number three. I'm sorry, Barbara, says Biff. The rules clearly state your first decision is final. Let's find out what they've won. The voiceover announcer booms. It's a cruise. Audience goes, ooh. Yes, a romantic cruise of the South Pacific on the beautiful USS Love Tub. Pretty impressive graphics up there. You'll spend a solid month together exploring exotic ports of call courtesy of Wonder Cruise Lines. Remember, if it's a good cruise, it's a wonder. And for our other contestants, why you lucky fellows have won a year's supply of armadillo polish, 20 cases of black shoelaces, plus a copy of our home game. Hey man, there ain't no way I'm spending no month on a boat with this jerk, shouts the delicate bachelorette Barbara. I want a chance to hit on that number three guy. I'm sure she's really truly delighted, folks, says Biff, attempting to cover. Now come on, let's really hear it for our lucky couple. A smattering of applause. The voiceover announcer says, Be sure to tune in tomorrow night, same time, same station, for the finest in embarrassment programming, the all-new Dating Connection. Good night. The control room speaker crackles. Okay, gang, that's another one in the can. Ragu Kaleri, please report to the green room to receive your prizes. The rest of you just stay where you are. Salt pork. Hey, Scoop John. Gosh, Larry, what good luck you have winning a fun-filled month-long cruise with that lovely bachelorette Barbara. The assistant producer looks at you with disdain. Well, Laffer, I must admit that none of us in the control room expected you to win. I'm sure you're not proud of the outcome, but rule through rule, I suppose. I don't feel good about that. <laughs> Here's your cruise tip ticket. All of us here at the Dating Connection with you the best of luck. You'll need it. Oh, I'm a creep now. I'm a creep. All right, let's sit for a while more. Scoops are taking over. It's okay. Bring more in. More scoops. The more scoops, the better. Ha. Huh, nice. Hey, Closet Ninja. Hey, you, cries the woman. Where have you been? We've been looking all over for you. I just won the dating connection, you reply. Big deal. You were supposed to wait here. Now hurry and follow me. Oh no, Larry. Here we go again. 
Stand in the place where you live. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally found him, says the Master of Ceremonies. Yes, we found our last Lucky Life Lottery contestant of this week's show. And here he is now, Mr. Larry. Uh, he double checks the teleprompter. Laffer? Yeah, Mr. Larry Laffer. A little applause. Mr. Laffer, we don't have time for our normal introductory chit chat. Just step right up to the wheel and give her a big spin. Under his breath, the MC admonishes you. Hurry up, Laffer. We're already running late because we couldn't find you. Later, Gaijin. Thanks for stopping by. Nervously, you reach for the wheel, knowing full well that the pleasure of America's 3D graphic animated adventure game players is riding on the luck of your pull. I love these TV studio sets. They're really well done. He did it! He did it! He's won the big one. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Laffer just won the largest prize in the history of the lottery. A million dollars a year for life. Applause. Tons of applause. Come on over here, Lucky Larry. Here comes lovely Lana Light, the Lucky Life Lottery Lady, with Larry Laffer's first year's winnings, the U.S. Treasury Department's first $1 million bill. That's a pretty big bill. On behalf of the Lucky Life Lottery, I'm pleased to present you our grand prize, $1 million, says the MC. Congratulations, Mr. Laffer, says the MC. You're a lucky man. Too bad we don't have time for a speech. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Larry Laffer, the luckiest guy in Los Angeles. Even more applause. The voiceover announcer says, That's it for this week's show. Be sure to tune in next time for the Lucky Life Lottery Show live from Hollywood. Good night. control room talkback speaker crackles okay kids there's another one that's good enough for who it's for <laughs> mr laffer please exit through the door on the left there will be plenty of reporters and photographers waiting for you Gee, Larry, things are finally beginning to go your way. First you win a month-long ocean voyage with the lovely Bachelorette, and now you win the biggest lottery prize in history. Something tells you this is too good to last. The commercials fund this show. Uh, so much for all those reporters that were going to show up. Well, now we have money to go shopping. That guy comes, comes to work a lot. This place may be overpriced, but at least it's gaudy. <laughs> There's a sales sign on the rear wall. We can't get any of those suits. You select a reasonably tight spandex job in blue. Although it's cut a little tight, perhaps that may work to your advantage on the ship. In fact, this may be the beginning of a whole new image for you, Larry. The Laffer Show. I don't think I want to be the Laffer Show. Math man, that is, I guarantee, that's the line that was going through Al Lowe's head when he wrote that joke. J. 
Jim Carrey's Leisure Suit Larry. I would watch that. Excuse me, miss. Do you, you say hesitantly? Do you have change for a million? Bella bueno, she smiles. But of course. But is that trivial little clearance item all you're going to purchase today? Yes, ma'am, you reply, handing over your lottery winnings. I've only got a million on me. All right, that will be $106,500, including tax. The change is $893,500. That's $100, $200, $300, $400, $500. Stop, don't count anymore, you shout. I don't have that long before my ship leaves. Very well, sir, she concludes. Have a nice day. How did you know she was going to say that? You pocket your new gigantic wad of $100 bills. Never skip leg day. We gotta wait. There's a jogger that's gonna run by here. That was we need to wait for. <laughs> There's something flying in the bushes back there. Oh, it's way in the distance. Okay. You make a vow to get more exercise. Well, that was worth it. <laughs> right after you back up your hard disk. Ha uh ha. -huh. All right. Did anyone notice the jogger back there? She's hard to see. He's hard to see. They are hard to see. House locked up tight. Searching through the trash until your suit turns off white, you discover your passport stuffed between the pages of an old Cosmo. You now smell like a combination of cheap department store credit card bills and roadkill. Sonic themed tourist items. I need those. Somebody go to BC and get me Sonic themed tourist items. Why, that must be Unreversal Studios. They smell like Larry Laffer. That's what credit card bills smell like. Larry Laffer in despair. Gee, isn't Harry Reams that famous Hollywood barber? A little bit of trivia for you. Harry Reams is that famous uh, porn star. He was in um, Deep Throat. Deep throat? Is that what it, yeah, that's what it's called. Maybe he could help you with your hair problem. What do you mean, what problem? Don't all barbershops look the same? Wow, there's like nude photos on the walls. 
How about a quick styling, you ask? Oui, monsieur, but of course, replies the barber. Allow me to correct that re receding hairline of yours with my patented special proprietary technique, macrobiotic styling reweaving. Yep, that's the one, Jasper Teen. Just have a seat in the chair, please. Harry Reams was actually uh, arrested for, um, for starring in that movie. Here, says the barber, take a look in this mirror and remember what you look like. When I'm done, you won't be able to recognize your own hairline. Why, you'll be a different man. Yeesh. You think to yourself, yeah, this is exactly what I need. A new look. I'll make Bachelorette Barbie change her tune. I think she I think he was in The Devil and Miss Jones as well. Okay, go for it, you tell the barber. Allow me to begin with a thorough cleansing to rid your hair and scalp of any possible pollutants, says the barber. I assure you I use only the trendiest products, all organically grown and available only in undersized, overpriced, biodegradable bottles. You wonder yourself, to yourself, what will I look like when he's done? Will I be handsome? Will I ever find true love? <laughs> ah, that's great. <laughs> wow. You certainly have interesting daydreams, says the barber. Hey, Brutus, get out of here. Wow, they blacked out where he peed on his shoe. Your hair is clean and conditioned, says the barber. Now for the special styling. However, in the future, may I recommend 10W40 and no more than 3,000 miles between oil changes. This is what it looks like when I get a haircut. All done, says the barber. <clears throat> Take a look in this mirror. What do you think? He looks exactly the same. <laughs> oh, well. You can't judge a book by its cover. That'll be fine, you tell the barber. Say, you ask him, exactly how could I know I was getting a macrobiotic styling? By the price. That'll be a hundred bucks, says the barber. Thanks, I guess, you say, flipping the barber one of your C notes. The barber replies, have a nice day. Uh, save a... Didn't bother to tip. This place has been closed for years. It's in desperate need of blocking. <clears throat> I don't get it. Swabs drugs. Channeling crystal clearance. We are... We make more computers... Enter... What does it say? We make home computers entertainment, entertaining. We make home computers entertaining, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, would that be soft? Is that a play on software, et cetera? I bet you it is. Swab's Drugstore has everything a guy like you might need.
looks just like the Quickie Mart. By the sign on the druggist's counter, you presume the druggist is out. Only a clerk remains, and he doesn't look too bright. I like the just say no sign back there. Swab, swab, swabs. There are shelves filled with sundries, but you see nothing that seems useful. Hmm, I need one thing in particular. Say, about all that sunscreen might be handy in the South Pacific. Uh, okay. You grab a bottle of SPF 90 while you, while you picture Bachelorette Barbara rubbing, rubbing it all over you. Girl prices. I like to pay for this, you tell the clerk. Do you have change for a hundred? No, he says, but feel free to give me a big tip. But of course, my good man, you tell him, suddenly putting on airs. Have a hundred. In fact, have two. Money means nothing to me. Like, thanks, dude, he tells you. Now let me go back to sleep. He concludes with a familiar, have a nice day. Well, the barber didn't do anything worthwhile. This guy, I wanted sunscreen, and that guy got me sunscreen. So, you know. Look at this soda. <laughs> There's only one soda cup left in the place. The specialty of the house, a grotesque gulp. That's like... It's totally something Phil would buy. GG's are legendary in the Los Angeles area. It's the only soft drink served in a painted 32-gallon trash can. A cup that large may take a long time to fill. A cup that large might take forever to fill. Finally, you top it off while you carefully consider how you're going to pick it up. Ah, shucks, this isn't real life, but merely an incredible simulation. You decide to put it in your pocket along with everything else. That is a complex animation. Here's a hundred dollar bill, you offer. Okay, partner, says the clerk. Too bad we don't keep any change at this time of night. But it's broad daylight, you protest. Have a nice day, she concludes. Yeah, see those ranks just keep cycling. I've already been a jerk. We're nearing a hundred points. Next is Jerk Store. The Jerk Store called. They're running out of you. Say, look, this store's finally open for business. All right. Cool store. 
Ye old ethnomusicology shop is filled with unusual instruments from the four corners of the world. You wonder which ethnic subculture makes such extensive use of electric amplifiers and drum sets. Hi, beautiful. You attempt to lay a little smooth mouth on the lovely Latin lady. My name is Larry, Larry Laffer. Buenos dias, señor dos asistanta Bella Bono. La señorita El Tacos. Wow. Good day, sir. How may I help you? I, I'm I'm guessing... I mean, El Tacos is obviously wrong. I'm guessing most of that was wrong. Suddenly, she smiles broadly, as if she recognizes you. Her smile makes you glad you took Spanish in high school. Too bad you slept through it. Ah, what the heck. You decide to brush the dust off your Spanish by attempting a conversation with the lovely senorita. <laughs> Perhaps you could begin by complimenting her on her extremely good looks. El pesto la guardia se spermo bubitos. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Your ears remind me of whale breasts. <laughs> her face brightens further. She seems genuinely interested in you. Your Spanish must not be so bad after all. Si, Salaluna el gros e pupi doggy la bambino, la senorita reparitos. Yes, but the moon is full and you are a chihuahua. <laughs> Scoop Joey, are you cringing at the writing or cringing at my terrible uh, attempt at even trying to read something that rep that represents Spanish? Whoa, speaking is one thing, but understanding is another. Her response baffles you completely. You have no idea what she means. Of course, that's never stopped you before. El pencilo e tubular, rigido amarillo, you tell her. My pencil is long, hard, and yellow. <laughs> El hombre del la nostra donde esta majora signale. La rito de stupido sententates. La senorita charma. Yeah, no kidding, Ben. Uh, so you're finally here. I thought you'd never show up. By the way, who writes these secret phrases anyway? La microfiche, la enim big dilo, onclunk no touche, doctor nonoki el kami. <laughs> The microfiche containing the secrets to the recent United States superconductor research breakthrough is hidden inside this rare Peruvian onclunk. Don't let anyone touch it before you personally deliver to Dr. Nonaki. And I don't need to tell you, be careful. He, and he alone, has the authority to deliver it to the USSR agents. I feel like that's not what she said. Muchos gracias, la senorita. Thanks, I guess. As best you can tell, she wants you to keep that unusual musical instrument on the counter. So, rather than risk offending her generosity, you take it. Have the nice day -o. Well, that that's ominous. Look at that, it's a lowrider. Say, what an interesting car, you think to yourself. How does he make it do that? You're so distracted by the lowrider that you fail to notice the unusual little man lurking beside the car. However, he doesn't fail to notice you. The little guy in the trench coat gives you a short head start, then follows you. Larry, be careful. This guy's up to no good. Hey, Keenad, nope. We just finished the terrible Spanish section. Wait a minute, what's this? How can you be at the door to the music store when you just walked off screen to the right? That must be someone who just looks like you. Something strange is going on here. Let's follow him into the music shop to see what we can learn. 
You, what are you doing back here? Says the cleric, skipping the foreign language subtitles completely. <laughs> you better get on with the mission before Dr. Nonaki prevents you from ever missioning again. What are you talking about? I've never seen you before in my entire life, says the dorky looking guy. Besides, you're not supposed to talk to me like that before we exchange our cute little secret phrases. What do you mean, she responds. You just walked out the other door over there. Over there. Over there. Not me, he exclaims. Hey, wait a minute. Don't tell me you gave the goods to someone else. Uh, uh, she stammers. I'm not sure. That is, there may be, uh, I may have... Her voice trembles with fear. I'm sorry, he fit your description perfectly, and he said the secret code phrases as well. Although, come to think of it, he did have a terrible accent. I thought the bad accent might have been part of your disguise. What will I do, she continues. Dr. Nonaki doesn't tolerate mistakes. Her eyes flash with an idea. Of course, if you promise to help me, I won't tell him how you lost the microfiche. Why, you? He threatens. If you know what's good for you, you'll shut down this joint, contact Nuntonite Island, and get the troops started finding this guy. They'll guarantee he tells no tales about your little indiscretion. If you can retrieve the microfiche before he discovers what he has, Dr. Nonaki might even allow you to live for a few extra days. She deliberates just a moment before making her decision. You're right, of course. You see if you can follow him while I contact the island by radio telephone. <laughs> radio telephone. Well, Larry, this is certainly another fine mess you've gotten us into. Not only is the KGB after you for grabbing what was supposed to be theirs, but Dr. Nonaki's beautiful army of henchats, game show hostesses, church secretaries, and bimbos is now hot in your tail. Since we've now learned the worst, we'll rejoin you as you wander through Los Angeles. Hen chats. Well, that's pretty seen. The aroma of dead fish and diesel fumes makes you realize you're at the harbor. Now, I think the cruise ship is actually timed, so you want to do everything, like, as fast as possible. Like, you know. There's a man standing here. Hi, you tell the purser. Here's my ticket and my passport. Okay, you just made it. Let's take a look at that passport first. Whew, nice photo, he says sarcastically. Now let's see if your ticket is in order. Ah, jeez, another freebie. When are those suits and marketing going to realize these boats don't sail on wind power anymore? Oops, I'm sorry, it's not your fault. Regaining his composure, he continues, Your cabin will be on deck F, cabin number one. That's all the way below decks and to the rear. This will give you an excellent opportunity to hear all the subtle inflections of our diesels. You may enter now, he concludes. Larry doesn't hurry for anyone. Fiesta deck. Let's see if I can see if clicking make the yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Looks like you just made it. The ship's almost ready to leave. Oh, there goes the streamers. The love boat. As Los Angeles slips out of view, your thoughts are on your search. Will you find love? Or just keep looking in all the wrong places? It's like a Duran Duran album cover.
spray on hair. To be fair, he acts like a serial killer. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> no one on the dating connection promised you a deluxe cabin. In fact, this is surely an unlux. Located at the rear of the ship's lowest deck, the noise from the engine compartment is deafening. You have a bad, you have a bed, a nightstand, and a small closet. There's a door in the aft wall. All right. Let's do a new save. Love tub. Well, 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 what are we here? Says the woman on the bed. Uh-oh, Larry. You've been caught entering someone else's stateroom. Why, I do believe that it's that darling young man that my daughter won on TV, says the woman. Good Lord, she's bachelorette Barbara's mother. Poor little Barbie got to feeling poorly just as the cruise was about to start, so I decided to borrow her ticket and come along instead. Your mind quickly envisions paradise lost. I hope you don't mind. I convinced the purser that it was in his best interests to assign us to adjoining cabins. I'm sure I can make your voyage enjoyable. I really want to get to know you, if you get my drift. After I saw you win that lottery show, I thought you were just about the cutest thing I'd ever seen. Except for my mister, of course. May he rest in peace. He was a good man, and usually quite sturdy, but one day his heart just couldn't take it anymore. You wonder why it is necessary for you to learn this. Honey, any time you want to come over and see Mama, <laughs> you just feel free to pop on through that doorway, you hear? <laughs> oh my god. She attempts to give you a cute, girlish smile. <laughs> she fails. Out. <laughs> Say, look who's back, says the mother. It's my little friend from next door. Came over for a little action, did we? Well, you've come to the right place, big boy. You've been caught in someone else's stateroom. You decide to make a run for the door. Oh, no. Yep, I've been looking for a man like you ever since my mister had his big one. What do you say we have a little fun? You do like having fun, don't you? This is not going. Oh, God. Hop on over there on the bed, baby. <laughs> Oh, my God. Now you just get comfortable in those chromium chains and handcuffs while I slip into something a little more comfortable myself, she says, opening her closet. Let's see. Possibly a little something in mink-lined leather would be nice. <laughs> Look at everything in the closet. Mama proceeds to have her way with you repeatedly. <laughs> Too bad that her way is not your way. <laughs> oh, you can see why this broad's a widow. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's try this again. Oh, I got to sit through that conversation. I better save when I get it. Okay, we'll get through all this again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save again. Now it needs. I need to get a message when I walk into a room. I like that the uh, the porthole has the 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 ocean going up and down outside. Come on! Oh no! 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 Come 
Come on. Get me out of here. Okay, this is a good place to change clothes. Oh, wow. And we're off. Walking around half naked. Now you're ready for the kinky grandma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A nice cruise ship, Murica. Okay, you very carefully rub the sunscreen over every exposed part of your body. That would be a lot of them. Ah, seems like a lovely day to catch a few rays. It's a good thing you applied that sunscreen. Look straight up and see lots of blue sky. Yeah, you probably do. Why, hello there, big fella, says the beautiful blonde with the body like a brick shipyard. <laughs> Why are you hanging around here? I've been looking for someone just like you for a long time. Why don't you come back to my place and you won't have to hang around all alone ever again? Jeez, Larry, you finally found yourself a live one. Come on, Samson. I just can't wait to get you all alone. Nope. We're not doing that. Going for a swim instead. The guy's butt. Get out of there. You can die here. And apparently on modern PCs, it's easier to die. Exactly how long do you think you can hold your breath? Come on, get out of there. Okay. You're clever to reapply the sunscreen after your swim washed it off. Brick shipyard. I guess that's good. That was refreshing. Okay, we're going to do an extra save here. Because apparently, if you do things out of sequence here, uh, you can get jumped by the horny grandma again. 
She's a brick. House. She's made it matey. This is at least a two night, maybe three night stream. These walks are long. Let's see if we can finish the the cruise ship at least here. Okay. And now we're heading back out. And like I said, I've, I've, I, I was doing a little bit of reading here, and I think everything here is timed. You only have a certain amount of time to do everything you need to do, uh, which is why I'm not really stopping to, to, you know, check things out very much. I'm just sort of following where it tells me to go. The ship's revolving nightclub has a television set behind the bar and only one empty stool. There's a complimentary bowl of spinach dip at the left end of the bar. I love spinach dip. Grab the loaf of French bread filled with spinach, mayonnaise, and spices. Mm-mm, good. And we're going to save that again. Doesn't look like there's much on the TV. Lower left side. Don't all barbershops look alike? It is the exact same barbershop. Is there anything you can do for this hairline of mine? You ask the barber. But of course, mister, says the barber. I've got exactly what you need. Just have a seat in the chair, please. Yes, I have exactly what you need, he tells you. It's all the rage, the latest thing. You see it everywhere these days. In fact, guys make a lot of money with one of these. I call it the Jimmy model, and I'm sure you'll like it just fine. He places the Jimmy carefully on your head. Impeccable fit, he cries. And for you, the price is right. Only $10,000. But I like to consider it more of an investment than an expense. All I can think of is, uh, was it John Lovett? Lovett? Yeah. Uh, in Seinfeld when he's, he had the wig. Good for you, Jack. All right. 10K for a wig? Oh, well, it's not like it's your money. Why not let those suckers who paid for all those Lucko Bucko tickets treat you to a new look? I'll take it, you tell him, and peel off a hundred hundreds from your rapidly depleting wad. Save again. The barber bids you farewell with a sweet, have a nice day. You catch a good look at yourself in the mirror and slip the wig into your inner jacket pocket. You tell the barber, thanks a lot, but I think I'll just save this until my cable channel application is approved.
You have the distinct feeling you should not be messing around on the bridge of a large ocean-going vessel. So far, the captain hasn't noticed you. I like all the cables coming out of the consoles. That's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I'm getting all my notifications for tomorrow at work. Uh, let's see here. Better keep it that way. Silently, cautiously, so as not to attract the captain's attention, you move a large toggle switch to the start position. A faint ticking sound starts. Come on, you gotta go down. No, not the barber shop. <laughs> Look, the ship has come to a standstill in the water. They must be preparing for the lifeboat drill. You better not leave this area. That's great. The lifeboat drill has brought the ship to a standstill. What have you done, Larry? See, I think the whole deal here is that you're being chased by the KGB. And if you were playing this uh, more properly, you probably know that a little better by now. Siren wails a warning cry, and the lifeboat begins to shake. You made it to the lifeboat in the nick of time. Good idea. This would be a perfect time. And you want to throw dip because otherwise he'll eat it. You toss the spinach dip as far over the ocean as you can, which is not really that far. Slowly, you drift away from the cruise ship. You wonder what you forgot to pack. Everything on this screen happens slowly. I do like that the flag isn't billowing anymore because we're stopped. And who ever heard of wind out on the ocean? I remember this part when I played this when I was a kid. <laughs> so ridiculous. As the good ship USS Love Tub slowly sinks behind the horizon, we rejoin our noble hero in his latest predicament. He's got some big ass hands. I think this section lasts a little while. It isn't isn't it funny how time flies when you're having fun? I put the wig back on. Oh. Day one. And day two. Day three. Day four. Boy, is that sun hot. It's a good thing you use that sunscreen to block those ultraviolets. The sun out here is hot enough to fry an egg. Um, math man, because you don't really control what happens here, and um, you're out here for days, so I think, if I remember correctly, if you have the dip on you, he'll eat it. And, of course, it's mayonnaise-based, and it went bad, and I think it makes you sick and kills you. You 
think the sun must be even hotter today. It's a good thing you wore that silly wig. The sun out here is hot enough to fry your brains. But you want to pick it up because you get points for it, obviously. Your thirst becomes more and more intense with every passing day. Visions of pre-classic Coke float before your eyes. <laughs> you extract the grotesque gulp from your inside coat pocket and are surprised to discover it has retained its entire 32-gallon capacity. You now have enough fluid to last you for weeks, but you're worried about your blood sugar level. Yeah, basically the whole the game up to this point, I think, has been building resources for this section. Your hunger grows intense with the passing of days. Visions of Danny's pizza float before your eyes. You cleverly open the sewing kit you stole from that mother's nightstand. Extract a safety pin and thread. You patiently fish for hours, but eventually catch your limit. Your limit for raw fish is quite low. Schlemiel. I'm a schlemiel. I need bigger glasses of water for these nights. My voice gets so croaky by the end of it. Uh, math man, yes, I believe that's the case. During a particularly rough storm, late in your tenth night at sea, your lifeboat crashes on a coral reef and shatters to bits. You grab the largest piece of wood you can, hold on tight, and survive the storm. The dawn finds you crashing through an offshore reef, tumbling through the surf, to a gorgeous beach. Hey Larry, that's you out there in the surf. Land ho, you cry. At least there are no sharks. Your poor leisure suit. Oh, good. Here comes someone to help you. Oh, that's mean. Congratulations, Larry. You've survived weeks adrift on the high seas with nothing but your courage, perseverance, and a few humble provisions. Endured tropical storms, vicious winds, and high seas in just a tiny lifeboat, prevailed over the surf, offshore barrier reef, and razor sharp coral, escaped the dangerous mother, avoided the vicious KGB, and the tempting enticements of the evil Dr. Nonaki's henchet hordes, and withstood that creep's audacious humor. And you're still good as new. But boy, is your suit a mess. And we are on Nun Tonight Island. And that is where... Oh, we're, we're wiping off the sand. Oh, look at that. The suit's in perfect shape again. Don't you just love a good polyester? That's where we're going to stop tonight. Um, next Monday, we'll find out where we are. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out and watching this tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the donations uh, to Extra Life. That is the main reason we stream three nights a week. Uh, yeah, it might be a three-night stream on this one. You're right. Um, anyway, yes, that is the main reason that we stream. Um, so please consider uh, donating. But I also really appreciate any support you give me through uh, subscriptions and through uh, merchandise and cheering and all that fun stuff. So please consider that as well. Um, so I will be back again tomorrow night playing more Fantasy Star on the, uh, Switch, and then on Thursday night, uh, Thursday night, maybe, I might have something else to do, I don't know if I'm going to be home at night, but if I am home in time, we'll be trying to finish up Simon's Quest, so please join me for those, um, hope to see you tomorrow night, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight, and, uh, have a wonderful evening, good night. <laughs>